So this is part four on restoring four David Bradley garden tractors. So just to sum it up, uh, that one there is a 64 uh, Suburban 600. This one here is a 1960, uh, supposed to be golden color. However, I'm switching it out for a 725 hood and it'll be painted blue. These two tractors are gonna be electric power. Then uh, 1959. Uh, this just has to be primed and painted. Of course, this is going to be original golden color uh, with the original style of Briggs. However, instead of getting, I think, a six-horse Briggs that it's supposed to have, it's going to get an eight-horse because uh, that's the closest thing I could find that it has. Got the remaining hoods that I got to finish sanding and painting along with some miscellaneous parts. And then here is the one running driving machine. This is a 65 Suburban 10. Uh, this one runs and drives the way it is, but... I have a new motor for it ordered because this one here is not nearly big enough, but it is good enough to drive it. So I can show you it going forward. So you put the shifter here forward, put your foot on the pedal, and away you go. Gonna get this Suburban 725 put together, and then uh, we'll do a time lapse on the uh, Suburban 600. So I snapped off one of the bolts that hold the tires on. So this is me trying to get the bolt out that I had broken off. Uh, these tractors sat outside for who knows how long uh, without any rear tires on them. So these threaded holes just sat in the mud the entire time. So they were very rusty and I should have tried, you know, threading something in there to thread it, you know, like this tool you see here. But I just rammed the bolt in there and broke it off. So luckily I was able to get it fixed, but there's been times where it didn't go so well. So I got the 725 as a rolling chassis. I still have to make a steering shaft as well as the linkage to actually go to the steering because all that was missing because I actually made this steering column and I made this front axle. Uh, so those are both replacements. And then of course you would have just seen me uh, get a broken bolt out of one of these rear axle hubs, uh, which is really cool. I was able to get that out without breaking anything. So I had to retap the threads on all six holes and I tried to just, you know, go in there without, you know, retapping the threads. I just broke the bolt off. So, whoops. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to put the front axle on this tractor as well as all the steering stuff, the way it's sitting on the forklift and the steering wheel just hanging off the ground and then come back and see what we do from there. So I got the front axle and everything on. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get it down from this forklift, and then it should be on all four wheels. Then I gotta do is just put that front grill on and the seat spring. So I think I got just a little bit ahead of the camera. So I did get that uh, Suburban 600 on all four wheels. Of course I painted the rims, the hood's painted now, so it's just sitting on it. So those are waiting for their turn to uh, get, you know, motors and seats put on. I painted the rims also for the 59. Them look awesome. And then, of course, the hood for it. That looks even cooler, I think. And then, of course, all the chassis and stuff. So everything is pretty much painted other than, like, them seats, the engine for this 59, and a couple of little other things. But the biggest thing is I got all my parts to finish up. Uh, these three electric tractors so then that way them can be done and just focus on the 59 So here's two of the three motors. I've got some solenoids Which are just 24 volt. They look like just you know your normal lawnmower starter solenoid except they're 24 volt Consistent, you know meant to be clicked on and then a couple more of them green uh, Ford and reverse doohickeys I'm gonna call it so I got the one motor already installed. The pulley is a little wobbly on the shaft. I didn't want to modify anything just in case it didn't work and I had to return it. But before I, you know, do anything else here, I want to show you what it's like to actually drive one of these things. Okay, so sitting on the tractor, I just put it in reverse. So I'm going to push the little switch on the floor and here we go. These are actually pretty fast considering uh, it does slip the belt a little bit. It needs to be tightened. So 
So I got the 65 basically done, other than, you know, the hood and some little finishing touches. But as far as the drive system, all that's completed. I found uh, like a 3-inch pulley or so and welded that onto the little sprocket that comes with the motors. So that has a sprocket on there. I don't think I mentioned this before, but these are 350 watt motors. So plenty powerful from my testing here to move these tractors around and even pull like a little yard cart or something with you. So I got the 725 here wired up. So I'm going to just kind of show you this and then I'll actually do a time lapse on wearing this one. So you got your battery, you got your plug that do not use. Uh, do not use these at all. I'm not just saying that just because I'm saying do not use it because you can accidentally plug something else into here and you will have an issue. So anyway, uh, still don't use it though. So that comes from the battery. Pretend this plug isn't there. Nothing to see there. Uh, you got your plus coming to the in on the solenoid. Uh, that comes down here to the floor switch, which is like your go pedal. And then that comes back to the little post. And then the ground comes from the battery. Uh, that comes to this box here. And then that comes to the middle piece here, which there are, it's already jumpered. You can see these metal plates going across there. So in this case, I have the positive hooked to this one here and then the negative hooked to this one. So the negative just comes in and hooks here, positive hooks to there. So when the solenoid clinks, this makes this thing here hot, I guess. And then I added a little thing just because, uh, just keeps it a little bit accidental from hit, hitting the button and the solenoid clicking, is I have the ground coming in, which is from directly from the battery, uh, moved over here. This is a switch separate by itself. And then that goes back to the ground on the solenoid. So now when I hook up my motor, I hook one of the wires up to this right here. And then the other one up to this one right here. So you can see how this is jumpered across. So basically what this does is it flips the plus and minus of the motor or the polarity. So you have forward and reverse. I don't know if that makes any sense. So basically if I kick that forward, plug in the battery with your connector do not use. So I need two hands to plug that in. So right now we are seeing zero volts. So if I push this here, we got 26.4 uh, positive. So if I click this to reverse, now we've got, you know, 26.4 negative because it switched the plus and minus. Now if I move this to neutral and push the switch, nothing, not even the solenoid clicks. Uh, just like an extra safety precaution. So instead of having an on and off switch on here, it's just as simple as putting this in neutral and that's your off switch. So I'm going to get this one here finished up and we'll get the wiring worked out on this Suburban 600. So now I'm wearing the Suburban 600. So I start off by removing the little screws from the forward and reverse switch, just to make it a little bit easier so I don't have to do it later on. Now I'm hooking up the positive coming from the solenoid. This wire gets power when the solenoid is clicked when you push the pedal on the floor. Now the negative wire, this just gets connected directly to the battery. Now I'm installing that little jumper wire that goes to that separate part of the switch so I can get a ground that goes to the solenoid when the tractor is moving, if that makes any sense. And then this wire here goes to the negative side of the solenoid, which in this case doesn't matter which side goes where on the solenoid, it doesn't matter. Now I'm hooking up the two wires that are going to be hooked to the motor. 
The wires that come with the motor are just not quite long enough, so I had to add on ever so slightly. And then this way, since I'm probably going to get the forward in reverse wrong, I can switch it without taking the green box back apart. And now the two wires that's going to go to the goal pedal. Uh, the black wire is the one that clicks it on, uh, backs from the solenoid, and then that gray wire you see me touch there comes from the battery. And that about finishes it for the wiring. It's actually pretty simple. So as you saw by that, I got all the wiring put together. I went ahead off camera and got the motor installed. So I got it the same same way as the other ones. I do still have to take the bracket back off as well as the pulley and paint it, but that can be whenever. Of course, the same battery will interchange between all of them. But that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to leave you with me doing some testing on this 600 that I just finished up. We've got some hills. Not really a hill. It's just like an incline right on the side of the driveway there and over here. I'm going to take you and show you on what exactly it can do. As well as I'll show you the uh, top speed, which this is... Well, all three of these are different. So that one's the fastest. It has the less, least amount of power. I'm thinking mainly because these two here has these big, large cast iron pulleys, which is kind of like a flywheel. So it's like once it gets it turning, it has a little bit more power. That one just has a small, small pulley back there. So that one's the fastest. This one here is the slowest because it has the smallest pulley. This one here is like a good mixture of both. So I'm going to go up this hill here first, and then we'll go over there and see how it goes up that one. It does bog a little bit. I'm going to get my phone out for a GPS and see uh, how fast we're going to go, depending on the terrain here. So, in the grass, feels a lot faster, oh, three, about three in the grass, four, I'm just going to speed up there because we just went downhill, about three. Four. All right, now I'm gonna go up a pretty good incline here. It's gonna slow way down. Yeah, we slowed down to a crawl there, but it did it. So, nice cruising speed of three in the grass.